Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another in a series of SkySwitch webinars. I'm Andy Abramson, the Chief Marketing Officer of SkySwitch, and today we're going to talk all about SkySwitch's CAM Command solution. For those of you who don't know what CAM Command is, well, you're going to learn all about it today. And as always, we want you to pop questions into the Q&A here in the webinar. We also want you to get to know our very special guest, the one and only Justin Baker. He's SkySwitch's VSAS specialist, and he's gonna be joining us today. Later during the webinar, we'll have one of your own reseller friends, Gary Lee of Converge Technologies. He's gonna to talk to us all about how successful he's been in selling Skies, which is Cam Command, in a really short time. I was talking with Gary just a few minutes before we went live, and I'm amazed at how quickly he's been able to take it to market, use it as a way to pick up a customer, and possibly win back some other business. So he's gonna talk all about that. Um, be sure to drop those questions into our Q&A panel at any point during the webinar. If it's relevant to what we're talking about right then and there, and I see it, well, I will do my best to ask that question of Justin Baker. Otherwise, we'll answer all of the unanswered questions towards the end. Now, there's one key thing as to why you wanna ask questions, and that's all about the Sky Switch swag pack. That's right, we pick, we pick the winners from those who ask questions. That's our first priority. And it's also someone who hasn't won already in the last uh, two months or so. And so we're gonna have three lucky winners of the Sky Switch Swag Pack, which based on the requests we're getting from people who don't win, I think they're really hot. So with that, let me turn it over to introduce Justin Baker, my good friend, the leader, the master, the mind behind all things VSAS. Here you go, Justin. Thank you, Andy. Appreciate it, and thank everybody who's joined us. Um, as Andy has said, uh, we're open to any Q and A's you may have, so save that for later. Um, in the meantime, let's get started here. Uh, to kick things off, the first thing you're going to have to understand is what Cam Command is. Um, Cam Command is a cloud-based video solution. And what that refers to is a cloud-hosted video recording platform, meaning that compatible IP cameras stream directly to the cloud, and no actual need for local storage devices is needed. Um, Cam Command as a solution streamlines video recording, uh, video storage, remote viewing, actionable alerts, all in one single package. Um, now with that single package, uh, you can think of deployment. Deployment of cameras in connection to the cloud can be a snap, uh, literally. Uh, a, solution, a solution can be provided in a very short period of time as well as done so in stages if needed. Um, so businesses can cover their most valuable or vulnerable areas first and later add on simply by installing another camera, connecting it to their internet network. It's that simple. Uh, unlike on-premise solutions, which require a lot of planning up front, um, you know, whether that's knowing the exact number of cameras to be installed, the amount of hard drive space that's required, all of that is surpassed with a cloud-based solution. Um, so along with ease of deployment comes uh, ease of management. That's kind of tied into that. This platform offers a multi-tier approach to VMS management, uh, meaning less equipment to deploy and maintain, um, a single point access for multiple locations, as well as you can easily share selected cameras with any additional users at no extra cost without having to add more equipment, a VPN, anything like that. Simply invite the guest user and that's it. They have their own account. Um, again, this type of ease is not typically possible with the local storage VMS systems. Um, it's not something that's easy implemented, I would say, or cost effective. Um, finally, with this uh, slide here, um, what it also offers is substantial savings um, that can be made by both resellers and end users. Um, in terms of resellers, it can shorten service calls with easy deployment and uh, reduction of overall equipment to be serviced and managed or placed even to be responsible for that um, for end users. They can also take advantage of savings by reducing upfront costs imposed by on-premise equipment or to kind of go back to a point past is the high cost of adding additional equipment later down the road if they decide that they need more cameras, more storage, what have you. Uh, again, most cost savings come from removing that expensive equipment and set up expenses from the upfront cost. 
cameras that work with let's let's talk a little bit about i mean the the whole thing here is you can go to the next slide i think the whole idea here is that cameras add a whole another level of integration with sky switch and there's a lot of cameras out on the market but we've been really careful i think in picking cameras that can work with our platform and integrate with the entire back end that we've built so when you i'd like you to just talk about the why we pick these cameras and what makes them unique and special to what we're doing with cam command absolutely so why we've chosen certain brands to be considered premium plug and play cameras, um, which again are by far the easiest and most maintenance free method of connecting to cam command um, is due to both quality and price point. So as you can see here, anybody that's familiar um, with the uh, video surveillance industry or the video recording industry, you by far would probably know access communications, probably the highest level of camera that you can purchase that has the most feature rich options. Uh, as well as Hanwha, which some don't understand, that is actually Samsung devices. Um, also on the same point as Access, very high quality, offers a lot of features, a lot of cutting edge analytics as well that can be used with Cam Command. Um, and then you come to price point. Even though Hanwha does have a cheaper series of camera called the Q series, um, Amcrest offers a more, let's say entry level source of camera also that is feature rich uh, as well as when used with cam command um, whether that's using motion detection or some of the other analytics that are included with the, those devices um, and as well as these manufacturers have made it very simple for us to integrate our platform with them so connection is literally plug and play when when you say plug and play everyone says that that term's been around forever do i simply just put a camera up connect it via ethernet or wi-fi and sky switches platform does the rest or is there any work that needs to be done by the reseller to make sure that that camera is pointing to the right server where the data is being stored what does plug and play really mean well plug and play is simply that plug the camera into either an ethernet or wi-fi connection as you suggested and then log into the cam command platform whether that's through the web browser or through the uh, mobile application and select the type of camera that you have, whether it's an Amcrest, Axis, Hanwha, there are other plug and play uh, brands out there as well that we're working with. Um, once you select that device, you can either simply scan the QR code on the back of the device with your mobile device and connect it that way, or input the serial number that's included with the documentation for these cameras. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I will mention with Hanwha cameras, it's a little more advanced to where you can actually connect multiple cameras into a single network and through the mobile app, you can actually bulk add them all together uh, using just a single push of the button. No needing to input any serial numbers, just connect to that same Wi-Fi network with your device, scan the network and connect the devices. And that's it. Okay, well, that makes it pretty easy for us to um, understand how all that works. And when, when somebody goes and signs up and works with you and all this, um, and they pick the cameras that work, what comes next? How do you figure out where to put the data? Do I just download it to a, a laptop sitting in an office or to a server sitting there? Does it go in the cloud? Can I do a hybrid solution? What's the storage approach for this data so that the, you know, everyone, like you watch all the police dramas, they always go and say, you, those cameras work? Yeah, you got the footage and they hand the guy a video cassette. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not as complicated as a video cassette, um, but in terms of data access. So as you can see, we offer multiple storage plans from seven day all the way up to 90 days and in between. Uh, all of these plans are based on 24 seven recording, although you can also set them up to record only when say an event occurs um, or if you wanna schedule it for a certain period of time of the day to begin recording, uh, you can do that as well. Um, and how access to that works is any recorded footage is going to be stored for that retention period. So you'll always have, you know, that seven days worth of storage until that seventh day when the first day that's been recorded begins to be overwritten. But in that meantime, you do have the ability to scrub back through all that footage on your timeline, view it, as well as create clips and download them. Um, so how that works is you'll simply just go back to the point in time when an event occurred or a time that you want to see. Um, click the, literally just click create clip. And what that'll do is give you a small window up to an hour to 
pick, download, and that's it. Once you've downloaded the clip, you can do whatever you'd like with it. You can view it through any standard player, whether that's QuickTime or you know, Windows Media Player, or you can just go ahead and email it to somebody uh, who needs it. Um, what kind of brings me kind of full loop is that um, beyond recording, end users may also be alerted when an event occurs, and that's also marked on the timeline that I was mentioning. Uh, emails sent contain a time, date, and uh, even a clip of the image or the uh, point in time that actually triggered the event, so whether that's motion or any other analytic event, such as line crossing or tampering. Um, that is also included with the push notifications on mobile devices. So you can quickly determine, you know, when something happened, what's there, you know, whether that's somebody delivering a package at your front door or the neighbor's cat wanders into frame um, to where you can easily see what's happening. And from there, from that alert, go straight to that point in time within the application or on the um, web interface as well to quickly, again, find that period, download it, share it, do whatever you'd like with it. Well, when you, when you think about this and when you look at the whole approach of having a monitoring system in place, how much data are you going to store over the course of a day, a week, a month, a year with so many cameras? And is there a way to extrapolate so people understand what the storage looks like? Sure. So with even the smallest, we'll use an example, say seven day recording. Um, and again, it will also depend on a couple of other things such as camera bit rate, resolution settings, um, things of that nature. So depending on your resolution, depending on the type of camera, um, just always figure that one camera is typically with the HD resolution is gonna require 1.5 to two megabits per second of upload speed. And that can add up somewhat quickly um, anybody that's sold a local storage device would know that that adds up quickly. You can be at, you know, five to seven gigs per day for a single device, again, depending on resolution. And that would definitely add up, as you can see, over 90 days. Um, so with that in mind, when you're storing to the cloud, that data doesn't matter. None of our retention plans or anything is based on the amount of data that you're storing, it's simply based on the retention period. So you could have a full 1080 resolution as long as your camera or your network can handle streaming that uh, in terms of upload bandwidth, you don't have to worry about the amount of data. It's all out the window, unlike a local storage device. Basically, it sounds like it's about three terabytes a year. It very well could be, or even more. Um, I mean, now that 4K is available for local systems, right. you could be looking at you know, just endless amounts of data that's required. When you're talking about retention, are there rules around that or laws around it? Or is there a best practice that people should have regarding data retention? Because like anything, you can become a hoarder of all your video footage. Or you might be somebody who says, okay, every seven days, I just wipe it out because the way my business is, if, it doesn't, if somebody doesn't come back within seven days, it's pretty much over. Sure. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of this. Uh, for typically for SMB or residences, seven days is sufficient because you'll notice if something's missing or if something's broken, you know, typically within a couple of days. Um, I would say businesses should go more towards 14 days, uh, small businesses at least, because sometimes it may take more time for management to discover what happens. Now for the 30 to 90 day, that typically falls into both regulated businesses or businesses that are liable to lawsuits and they need to go back for a period of time. So say something happens one day and then, you know, 60 days down the road, they figure out they're being sued. So they'll need to go back for that period. Um, regulated businesses would typically go with the 30 day and uh, banks, uh, fitness centers, some place that might have physical liability hospitals should typically go with a 60 to 90 day retention period just to cover themselves. Okay. Well, this is all well and good on the storage front. Um, I, I think that storage though, how do you manage it? What do you, do you just go in and go delete, 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 or are there tools that help you manage the storage so that you can set timers at all automatically do the deletion, 
Um, that if you mark something for saving because you needed a certain amount of footage, maybe somebody slipped and fell on your property and you want to keep that to see that, well, they didn't really slip. They were horsing around. Sure. Uh, sure. How does all that work as part of the storage solution? So with these retention plans, um, after the set period of time, so we'll say 30 days, after that 30 day period is up, it will begin to override the past 30 days. So on the 31st day, you'll start to override your first day automatically. It's all automatic. There's nothing that you need to do to control that. Um, now in terms of storing footage, it would be as simple as, again, creating those clips, downloading it and storing it either locally or storing it on say Dropbox or some other piece of equipment um, for later use. Um, I would always suggest that if event does happen um, and you're not sure what to do with it, go ahead and download it, store it, that's it. Um, and at that point, you're just storing small clips, whether that's the hour range of the maximum ability of the clip or even just a couple minutes worth of storage there. So uh, to reiterate, everything here based on our retention plans will be overwritten automatically. Okay, well, all those plans work, and I imagine that there's some kind of um, interface where you go in, you say, I want to save my data for so many days, after so many days, delete. Do I get a warning notice that I'm about that? Like, for example, we're on Zoom right now, and I, I know from using it, I get notified that you know, I'm over my limit on cloud storage, so much will be deleted. They'll tell me they're going to delete it, and then they'll eventually tell me they deleted it. <laughs> Does it, I mean, which means I've got a lot of chances to download it or put it somewhere else, put it on a cloud. How does our information flow work so that somebody doesn't go, oh my God, Justin, that, that I really needed that and it's gone. Sure. Unfortunately, that would be the responsibility of the user um, okay. or the reseller that's controlling it. So there is no warning. Uh, it should just always be noted that from the day you're at currently, you'll only have 30 days worth of footage from there. So if you're somewhere in between, I would always just suggest to go ahead and you know find and download your clip. Definitely be responsible with the uh, video footage that you are recording. Okay, well that's a real, I think we've done a real good job at understanding storage. Um, let's take a, a big step back a little bit. There, there's a lot of reasons why in today's day and age you want a monitoring service, a video monitoring service you want something that watches your property, you want something that, it might be a construction site, it might be a car dealership, it might be a jewelry store, restaurants are constantly using them where they've got a camera pointed at the bar, pointed at the cashier, pointed at the hostess stand, you know, looking at the restroom area, not in the restroom, but at the restroom area. What are some of the real advantages when you get around to saying, I know I need a service like cam command. I know I need this monitoring and overwatch capability. And, and again, you'll, you're here. I'm not using the word surveillance. Surveillance has some negative connotations out there, especially right now. This is, this is not about spying on people. I, I want to be really clear. You know, this is about managing your business where you're able to observe things and why, and being able to, keep track of what's happening without having to physically be standing there. And that's, so that's why, you know, auto repair shops may have cameras pointed at the garage area. And the big reason is they want to make sure the mechanics are working, but also they want to make sure that the patrons aren't standing in there poking their head in and all of a sudden the guy's necktie goes into the engine and boom, he's dead. So there's a, there's a, which means the owner could be working in his office, catch on the camera, and up, walk out, or make an announcement, um, patrons are not permitted in the, the shop area. What are some of the advantages that exist with Cam Command Solution right now that make this so good for resellers to go out and talk to their customers who have a want, but more importantly, a need for a video monitoring solution? Absolutely. Um, and Again, I'm a firm believer, while there are many advantages to CAM Command uh, as a solution, these five here are basically the key points in what make this solution so important. Um, the first being how quick and easy it is to deploy. I mean, especially with plug and play cameras, uh, you can definitely streamline the time spent deploying the solution. So less time in the field means less cost for your techs, right? Um, and, and at that point, it gives you more time to discover new 
potential clients that also need a VMS solution. So it gives you a little more leeway to spend your time elsewhere rather than focusing on, you know, installing a NAS device, configuring a network, installing cameras, blah, blah, blah. And then at that point, syncing with multiple users to access it. It's all very simplified here. And again, especially with the plug and play cameras um, for deployments. Um, along with that, instant access, you can view cameras from anywhere in the world using our mobile app or web browser interface, as long as you have internet access, obviously. Um, no syncing of multiple devices with an on-site VMS. Um, you just simply connect the cameras to cam commands and gain access to the web browser interface or download the mobile application and have instant viewing right there. So you could, you could literally have your customer live viewing their solution in minutes, you know, per camera, obviously, or however long it takes to install the camera, but it's a snap. Um, scalability. This is a, a real important one. Customers can take advantage of one or a small number of cameras at first, you know, really get a feel for the application or really try and figure out what exactly they need and easily and cost effectively grow their video solution as they wish. So you can give the customers a taste, as I said, of how the platform works by installing one or more or a small amount of devices, easily add more when they realize the benefits, which honestly is very likely, inevitably, um, especially if they've ever interfaced with an off-the-shelf NVR, DVR, and just how cumbersome that can be, um, or if they've invested a lot of money into a NAS-based VMS, and, you know, they realize they need to scale and how much that's going to cost. Um, as, you know, those particular solutions can be very expensive, especially when not planned accordingly. Um, and with that said, unlimited camera connections. There's zero limit on the number of cameras that you can connect. Um, so you could have an infinite number of locations, all accessed from a single access point. There are zero, again, limits to the number of cameras that can be connected. Or even if the cameras are mixed match brands or models, as long as they're compatible, they can connect to cam. So wait a second, with that, what I'm hearing, somebody could have a security company as a customer and that customer then as a security company could rely on SkySwitch's cam command and they can deploy many different cameras for different accounts and not be, or you could be a, uh, a franchisee of a coffee shop chain or a burger joint chain. And you want to have cameras in all of your fast food restaurants. You can have an unlimited number and you can keep track of all your stores. It sounds like. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially with our grouping feature. So what grouping does, is it allows you to put, say, site A, your location A, um, and mark that and group those cameras together. You can do so. Just simply create a group, knock those cameras into that group, and then move on to the next, to where you have group B. And then you can even have, say, even a regional group, to where all of your coffee shops in California can all be grouped together in a separate group called California, so that regional manager can oversight all of those. Um, and again, it can be used as a tool, really, especially in retail to, again, not spy on your workers, but just ensure that they are at where they need to be at the time they need to be and that there's nothing else going on in that area around them. Um, as well as if, say, the coffee shop already had an existing system, if those cameras happen to be compatible with cam command, whether that's through plug and play or through port forwarding, you can also connect those cameras to our platform without having them have to invest in new devices. So you can use a mix and match of brands, types of cameras from any location in a single platform. Justin, can you set up things like um, no-go zones? You know, um, deep, like a you know, zone, like you'd say, this camera watches this place. And if anything crosses the beam or gets in camera view, I would get an alert of some sort. Similar, is almost like an alarm system, but you know, I have a canary here at my house and I've also used some other things and whenever anybody would walk in like a service tech from a maintenance person, a housekeeper, I would, and they would cross the camera on my smartphone, I would be getting an alert that, and I would then be able to tune in and see. So like when the cable guy would show up, I would know he was there. Absolutely. And it, how, how does all that work? So with instant alerts, which is a really cool feature, uh, you can receive notification from your cameras the moment an event triggers uh, via push notification notifications or again, email. Um, so really cam command can be considered a combination of both video recording and a security system. Um, you can know exactly when something's happening, access the platform to react and have the stored footage to use as say evidence. 
Um, as previously noted, email alerts now include a snapshot too, so it gives you a, a real good idea of what is happening. Um, as far as no-go zones, yes. Um, for our plug and play devices, you can set up multiple types of analytic events, whether that's motion, again, tampering, line crossing, enter and exit for specific devices. You can set up multiple zones of motion to where, again, yes, you can set motion for, say, the upper right-hand corner of a frame and turn the threshold and sensitivity to zero so you're not being bothered with notifications from that high traffic area. Whereas within that same camera frame, you can put, say, a high sensitivity motion area where nobody should be and get instant alerts for when somebody crosses that line. Um, so it can be used to multiple advantages. Um, again, it's really a complete package for both businesses and residents to be able to use and again, be notified at the right time when things happen. Okay, so the notifications is a strong benefit that people have. Are the notifications archived just like the footage is archived? Or is there a record that you can go back and look? I remember I was on the Public Safety Commission of a West Coast community in, in California for quite a few years. And one of the things we had was an alarm ordinance because merchants were using the alarm notifications to know that their staff arrived in the morning at nine o'clock. Sure. Or if they didn't go off at nine o'clock, they knew the staff was late. Well, we were fining them a progressive $50, $150, $300, et cetera, because they were using it as their way of knowing that their staff was coming in. It, it, the city became the record keeper, so to speak, which isn't what anybody wants to have happen. It, do, the, do these alerts and notifications, are they archived? How do you use them? How do you access them? What makes them so valuable? Yeah, so in terms of archiving, so that would be handled by actually your email application. So even if you happen to trash your email alert, it's still going to be there in the trash can, unless you're, you know, an avid purger of your trash. Um, you could also set up a separate uh, email inbox for most email providers for your alerts to where you can keep an archive of them there. You can always scrub back through them through your email, and those links are going to still be active to the point in the timeline as long as that period has not lapsed. But yes, you will have a date stamp as well as a time when that event occurred. Same with push notifications. I know at least with Apple devices, they do archive uh, push notifications where you can scrub through those as well. Again, um, those uh, push notification links would still be active as long as that point in time has not expired. So you could click on it and go directly into the app and go to that point in time on the timeline. You know, I, I really like this whole solution in that it's cloud-based. There's no need to have anything on premise other than the cameras. So what are some unique ways that you can deploy Cam Command? Sure. So the first example here is going to be probably the most common. Uh, and that's going to be select only the most important views required to back up to the cloud. Um, and this is usually going to be a small installation. Again, for those that are just kind of dipping their toes in or those that don't want to invest a lot or those that are not really sure how the cloud works. So you're going to select maybe one or two, maybe three cameras install them, or you can integrate with maybe cameras that they've already had on premise if they're compatible. Um, and it's going to be the cameras that you absolutely need to have instant access to. Um, say the front door, uh, cash register, maybe the loading dock, you know, just for general oversight of a small business. Um, with these installations, there's no need for a robust internet connection. Typically standard residential or business internet connections would be uh, useful for the small number of cameras. You wouldn't run into any blocks there. Um, and again, there's no need for local storage here. So typically with small businesses, you run into folks that, you know, maybe they're really good at business, but they're not so tech savvy, you know. Um, so you don't have anything local that they need to manage. Everything is completely in the hands of the reseller. And again, whether you introduce a service contract with that, or, you know, if it's just a general service or replacement that you have, the actual business owner isn't having to worry about anything. You just install the cameras, connect them to the cloud, hand them, you know, their mobile uh, access through their mobile device, and that's it. Um, now with the local also comes kind of a split solution. So say a small business already had, say, an eight-channel NBR. Uh, what you can do is split out the most important cameras that they have and add those to both the cloud as well as still store locally. Um, now, this solution is typically more common for those businesses that maybe don't have enough bandwidth to upload all the cameras. Um, or again, they just want simple access to certain cameras, again, the most important cameras, um, because local storage devices are honestly, again, pretty cumbersome to be able to view outside of the network. 
Um, so the most important camera is somebody's coming in the front door. It's connected to both cloud and local storage. That, what it's giving you is an access point, an easy access point to be able to say, oh, hey, I got this notification here. You know, let me see what's happening through cam command. Oh my gosh, somebody's breaking into the store. And at that point, you have you know, a half redundant solution where you got the notification, where again, cam command's acting more of like a security alarm, as well as you have your local storage that's storing you know, help for maybe a larger period of days, 30, 60, maybe 90 days. And you have lesser storage on the cam command side. And finally, what we have here is a fully redundant solution. Um, now, this is not so common these days yet, and that's only because internet bandwidth is only really now starting to kick off. But you know, in certain areas, there's quite a bit of bandwidth that's available, and there are also businesses that do require full redundant uh, solutions. Um, and with CAM Command, certain models of our plug and play devices even offer the ability to connect um, to their locally stored footage, whether that's through a NAS device or an SD card that's loaded in the camera. You can actually play back that stored footage from those devices directly from CAM Command. So it gives you kind of a, a really good solution for instant access still, as well as downloadability from your local uh, storage device. Um, it's, it's stated though, certain cameras can directly interface with NAS setups. Um, it's, there's not that many. So what should be said is that while you can also access that local footage from cam command, um, even if you can't with cameras that might not be compatible with that, you can still have this kind of double-edged sword, this full redundant solution. Um, and I, I think this is gonna be one uh, more of a solution that's growing at this point. Um, or again, coming from, say, a facility that absolutely requires it to really have uh, full coverage. If their local system goes down, they still have cloud access to it, cloud storage, or vice versa. If their internet goes down, they have local storage. Uh, especially banks, any, any area that has high risk of natural disaster, those, those also typically go with the fully redundant solution. And those are the three primary ways of deploying CAM command. When when you look at all these different ways of storage, that also tends to lead into how to find the right type of cloud video customer. Yes. Who's right for this? How, how does a reseller go out and say, ah, you need this, I've got a solution for you versus waiting for the person to pick up the phone because I don't really think that everybody, this is right for everybody. How do you identify the right folks? Sure. So you got to ask yourself which businesses, as you said, need video solutions the most. And all honestly, I think nearly all businesses have at least a medium to high level need for property protection or oversight. Um, most commonly to start would be uh, businesses with multiple locations. So again, coming back to the franchises, uh, what Cam Command provides is a single point of access for viewing and managing their multiple locations, uh, especially retail franchises, including food industry, fast food, um, small properties that need a simple and cost-effective and a repeatable solution. So they don't want to have to get used to five different types of systems. You know, they have something that can be deployed over and over again that's very, very familiar, um, as well as require an easy use to the application is, again, they're mostly not tech savvy. So you, again, connect your cameras, give them the access to the app, and that's pretty much it. Um, Along with that would become property management, usually another very small deployment, maybe one or two cameras per property that they're overseeing. Um, again, it's a quick and easy and very repeatable solution. Uh, one that's easily shared with other property management personnel or groups, again, through uh, unlimited users or unlimited grouping. And again, that you just have that single access point for everybody that has access to it. Um, along with that would be health and fitness, which kind of falls into the same multi-location franchise category as retail and the fast food. Um, these centers often have numerous cameras covering numerous locations. Um, very popular solution for oversight and liability of customer uh, injury. Um, most of these types of businesses already have kind of a clunky on-site solution. They usually go with the cheap NVR or DVR and, you know, go try and repeat it, but they'll usually end up with mixed match hardware, can't access all of it all together and whatnot. So it's really kind of chunked together as like a, a management's responsibility. Um, so again, with this, you can easily start small and find that these businesses, business owners or managers 
quickly gravitate towards something that is easier to use and that they don't have to maintain, as well as you can kind of move with them if they have, say, an on-site device already by, you know, maybe connecting one or two of those most important cameras to the cloud and just give them that taste. Just give them a feel for how easy it is and how easily they can manage and access multiple locations. Um, I mean, it, it's pretty straightforward. All three of these um, industries really have kind of the same need for that uh, multi-location access. Um, hey, Justin, I have a really oddball question. Sure. Can you stream this content from a vehicle? So let's say somebody's got a bunch of trucks running around town and they've already put internet in the trucks for a bunch of reasons to send back data. Could they also put cameras that can go to cam command that are in motion? Yeah, absolutely. It would all be based on the internet connectivity. If you have a solid, even mobile connections these days are, are typically pretty solid. If you have a good internet connection, you can definitely stream it to cam command for capture. Okay. So there's a unique solution. And with 5G coming around where you're going to have it on all the lamp posts and stoplights and everything, literally for mobile fleets, cam command can be in integrated into it. So you know how like the Uber drivers sometimes have a front facing camera or rear facing camera. This is a great solution as well for those who are working with delivery companies, local transportation companies, et cetera. Just something I thought of, of something you said that sparked an idea of the right type of business. Um, you talk about businesses with multiple locations, like health and fitness locations. What about privacy? Do people have to be told they're being recorded or they're being monitored? Do they have to put up a sign? What's some of the legalities around that? Absolutely, yeah, especially, in, well, in any private property, uh, at that point, it would become part of a contract. So typically when you sign up for a gym, you have to fill out a form, sign their contract. Usually included in that is the, uh, the notification that yes, you are being recorded, um, as well as the signs on the front of businesses are typically required. Uh, it's gonna be dependent on state though uh, for that. And I believe also the type of business, but yes, in the example of uh, fitness centers, I would say 99% of the time within the contract that you're signing to join, it will include the uh, notification that you will be recorded. And then places like liquor stores, uh, retail liquor operations, where ho ho wholesale operations, or even cannabis, whether it's the storefront like a MedMen, which is a national chain, or whether it's a production facility, why are, why are those locations turning to services like Cam Command? Well, while still growing, a number of states require offsite video storage uh, to operate, especially cannabis at this point in time. Um, cannabis retail and production facilities are well regulated um, in a number of states at this point. I believe it's up to recently up to 12 that require at least 30 days of storage offsite. Offsite meaning nowhere near the premise, which i.e. cloud solution. Um, so with these, there is an importance to have easy deployability for those that are entering the industry or for states that quickly implement the regulation, they need to be able to make a solution quick and be able to either connect an existing camera that they have from their onsite system or just toss in, you know, one or two cameras to cover their safe or production facilities to cover their loading areas or their production uh, belts, whatnot. Uh, as well as the cash registers, uh, especially for liquor and retail uh, and handle, handling facilities. Um, they're gonna need to be able to make quick decisions to change as time goes on and Camp Command can certainly scale with these industries needs. Um, I know specifically in Oregon, it started out as just a single camera that you needed offline for cannabis industry. And uh, a couple years down the road that turned into two cameras that were required offsite, one of the cash, the point of sale system and the other of either the NVR closet or their safe. Um, so there's cam command. Need more cameras connected to the cloud quickly? You can do so. Simply install a, a standalone camera to connect directly to the cloud or tie into one of their existing devices if it is uh, compatible. That's great. I, mean, I think the cam command is really providing a really useful and worthwhile solution set, uh, especially in the regulated businesses. But what about the sprawling properties, whether you're a hotel or resort? Uh, I used to be 
uh, president of my HOA. And you know, I was very security conscious, uh, but I never put cameras up. Though in thinking back, I would have liked them around the pool because we often had incidents at the pool. And of course we got dragged into you know, frivolous lawsuits. What are some of the you know, larger locations? Because what impressed me upon what you're saying is this thing scales really well. Absolutely. Um, sprawling properties can present quite the difficulty, especially for deploying and accessing onsite equipment. Um, Cam Command removes the need for multiple onsite devices as we've gone over here. It also negates the complicated or multi-tier accessibility that comes along with tying those all in together. Um, so every one of these uh, industries that you see here, whether that's education, campuses, hotels, resorts, HOA communities, they all can benefit from the same points. Um, the first being easy to deploy, we've gone over that. Um, lack of daisy chain equipment, complicated setups. I mean, just think of the numerous local storage devices that a resort or a campus has uh, and how much time and money it costs to manage them. I mean, simply just to manage them. Um, with Cam Command, you can simply just, as long as you have internet access, toss up a camera, give it network access and connect it to one single storage solution in the cloud. Um, simple access to numerous devices from a single access point. Uh, you can use CAM command groups again to easily identify each location or area. You can invite guests at will for people to manage those locations or areas. Um, most importantly, I'd say schedule alerts as well. So areas again that are off limits can easily be set to notify them when if somebody infiltrates them. Um, so say after hours on a campus or certain areas in an HOA community, such as maybe a front gate after hours or a, a certain lot. Um, same thing with hotels and resorts. You know, what happens after 9 or 10 p.m., the pool closes down. Well, should somebody be in there? No. So be alerted as soon as that happens. Um, as well as, again, unlimited cameras, which speaks for itself. Um, unlimited guest viewers. You can, again, invite, disinvite, manage all of your guest viewers at the click of a button from either the mobile application or the web browser. Um, very simple to do. Very simple to invite somebody, simply input their personal email address. They'll receive an invite link to that email. They click it and boom, they have a CAM command account of their own that they can access again from the web or mobile app. Um, in comparison to local storage, CAM command really seems like a no brainer for these ver verticals to me, um, especially regarding the amount of equipment that it does take um, to store locally on such vast properties. Let's say I'm a reseller and I've got some interest from one of our existing accounts. How do you go about putting together a sales program? What are the steps necessary from your experience to have a really solid strategy around selling CAM command? Sure. Uh, the first is going to be the easiest. As you see, there's going to be four primary points here. Um, the first being upsell existing customers. So use your knowledge base of your existing clientele to really get a feel and determine who would likely benefit from a cloud-based video solution. Um, I, while installing VoIP products, or maybe you're a network service provider, I mean, did you notice an existing video solution that could be streamlined, maybe? Um, something that's clunky online or that they're complaining about, or that maybe you put your eyes on and you see that it's you know, a decade old. Uh, also, did you notice no video solution at all? So it's good to have Cam Command in your back pocket to say, hey, you know, I know you have you know, your business here and I think you'd like to really protect it, what if I could offer you, you know, a small to medium to large type of video cloud solution that you don't have to manage, you don't have to muck with, you don't have to do anything but download it and view it. Um, and also, I would really think that end users would likely want multiple services to be provided by a single vendor rather than having to use, you know, multiple service agencies. Um, again, to split, say, VoIP or maybe you're a network manager just bundle that all into one, depending on what you provide, and uh, really make it simple for the end user. Um, the second would be bundling with hardware. This one's pretty straightforward. Offer a lease program for the camera hardware and bundle it with the actual cloud retention service over a multi-year contract, maybe month to month. Um, just tie in the actual cost of the retention plan with, say, either a leased camera or a camera that you sell. Um, such can be done also by bundling with a video solution and support. Um, you combine the cost of the retention and or camera hardware with a service and support agreement where if something happens with the camera, you, you, know, you can offer them the ability to fix it. Or if something happens with, you know, say cloud recording, 
you can also bundle that in with a service. Um, again, it can be bundled in again with hardware for a complete package. Um, finally, single license bundling. This is probably the most, the easiest to do to offer to really get your foot in the door. Uh, start by just including one license of cloud retention, maybe even the lowest, say a seven day with every new sale that you have. Um, either integrate with an existing compatible camera or offer to also sell them equipment. Um, if you're installing VoIP, include a single license of you know, the lowest retention plan or maybe a 14 day retention plan and sell them a camera. So get your foot in the door with a service that you know that they'll want and also give them something free like say, hey, try this, check it out, see what you think of it. If you don't like it, you know, we can take it out in a month, but chances are good that they're gonna like it and they're gonna wanna move forward. Um, the idea here is to get the customer hooked. Let them see how easily you can provide a, at least one camera and give them instant access to it. Uh, then let features and ease and access uh, or sharing soak in. Ensure the client understands you know, how easily they can scale their video solution. Oh, hey, I want another camera. Okay, that's fine. It'll take me 10 minutes to pop this in. Um, and you know, add further cameras as they want or can afford. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm so far, I'm really impressed with what can be done and how they can sell it. We, you made a success story with somebody and we're very happy to have Gary Lee with us from Converge Technologies. Gary, you've been patiently listening to all this. Why don't you tell us your story and how you turned a sale so quickly? Okay, well, I had a, a car dealer, a large car dealer down in Panama City, Florida. And uh, of course, we all been tore completely up by, uh, by a Cat 5 Hurricane about 18 months ago. So they were no different. Their campus had been destroyed and rebuilt and put together with bailing wire and, and tape. And so they had, uh, they had 10 buildings on their campus and they were microwaving signals back and forth. They were all on the same local network. But they called me about a paging system. So I went to an IP paging system and connected their, their buildings for out, outside paging. Uh, when, when I didn't have infrastructure between the buildings, we were using microwave in a lot of cases. And so they said, well, can you do, can you do cameras? And I thought, well, there's, if they're all on the same network and can get back to the, they had a 200 meg uh, fiber coming in that had up and down 200 meg. So I said, sure, we can do cameras. So it was just a matter of getting the cameras wired back to a point uh, to uh, tie into their network. So, we uh, started out with 12 cameras and ended up putting 17 cameras in that location. Uh, and also one of the ways that I got the, the deal was uh, when I was putting in the speakers for the paging, I went ahead and pre-wired for the cameras. And uh, so I just was able to charge them like a, like a pull along price for the installation, which was considerably cheaper. And so, uh, we got them in relatively cheap as far as the equipment went, and they ended up going with a thirty day, a thirty day uh, plan, which was, and and I, I charged them thirty dollars a month per camera, and I included service with that, so they were very satisfied with that. And then the uh, the owner of the business, which is Mr. Gainer, uh, he said, "Well, I need twelve of them at my house." So we went over and put 12 in each house, put them on a 14 day plan. And then the manager's pastor came by and he said, well, I need 12 cameras for my church. Put him on a 14 day plan. And in about eight weeks there, we had three pretty large installs and I had not anticipated. I was the same way with a lot of people. They said, well, you know, how would you price these up against a, a, a on-site system that would be a lot cheaper? And it turns out that they just didn't want to deal with the equipment. They didn't want to deal with the obsolescence. And uh, they liked the simplicity of just being able to go to their cell phone and see the cameras. So uh, that's, in a nutshell, my story on that. Are, are you finding that once you were able to explain how Cam Command works, that the sale wasn't that hard? Is it one of these that almost sells itself? In, this, in these instances, it was. Uh, I had just about given up selling cameras because uh, you can go to Sam's and buy a camera system for $500. And I thought, well, there's just no room in it for me to go in there and try to mark it up and sell it. 
the other thing is that every time I sell a piece of equipment anymore, everybody just goes to uh, Amazon and looks at the price. And so uh, that was what kind of pushed me to a hosted environment anyway. So I said, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to put my profit on the monthly and I'm not concerned about the, uh, the equipment sales so much as just getting it. And I tell the customer, I say, well, you can go buy it if you want to. I said, you can handle the warranty and, and all of that. And I won't have to. So great. You go buy it. Oh, no, no, we want you to do that. We don't want to handle the warranty. So I, you know, I usually mark my equipment up pretty low anyway, because I'm assuming that they're going to go look at my price practically anyway on Amazon. So, um, they were impressed with the fact that they could go and look at a camera and on Amazon and it's not that far from what I'm charging them. So they felt like they were getting a good deal. And the monthly compared to obsolescence and maintaining the system uh, didn't seem to be a problem to them. It was a surprise to me. I honestly didn't expect that. That's great. Well, we're really happy that you're a happy sky switch reseller. More importantly, we're happy that your customers are happy with you because that ultimately all rolls up back to us. So, you know, thank you so much for being with us and being with us today because it means so much to us. Um, I'm going to turn this over and open up the question and answer session um, right, right now because we've got some great questions. I was looking at the Q&A and I'm so happy to see it. Um, first question comes from a, one of our regulars. I don't think he's missed a webinar. Robert Harney. Robert, thank you for coming. You've actually asked two questions that I can see so far. How do these cameras compare to industry standards? What would be the competing cameras? Uh, that's Justin. Well, that was his first question. Sure. In terms of industry standards, I'm sure we're all familiar, or maybe if you're not, um, some of the more popular brands that are out there that can be purchased, you know, even by a private party would be uh, the Axis devices, which are very popular and well-known. Um, Hikvision is also a well-known brand. I think Amcrest is also <clears throat> moving into the market uh, pretty quickly with their own devices as well, uh, their local storage devices. Um, so the camera brands that we are quote unquote plug and play with, I would say are top tier as well as entry level. So we're very competitive with any of the cameras that are out there in terms of quality, especially the plug and play devices. Now, um, we do interface with port forwarding cameras. So you could essentially pick any camera brand that you prefer, um, but that will come at the cost of having to network, uh, having to manage a network, having to port forward and ensure that the uh, settings for that network are continually updated as uh, if they don't have a static IP for those particular networks when port forwarding, eventually the ISP will rotate that uh, IP address and at that point, you'll be disconnected from the cloud. Whereas if you use a plug and play device um, from any of our uh, plug and play camera providers, even if the ISP rolls over that IP address, you won't have to worry about connection. It'll stay connected. What about overall video quality? Uh, Robert was wondering if, this, if the cameras offer uh, zooming in and keeping an enhanced image. Can they pan? Can they tilt? What's the capabilities remotely with the cameras? Absolutely. Any of our plug and play uh, devices, whether it's from Amcrest, Axis, Hanwha, Spico, as well as Udenden, as long as those cameras support PTZ, you'll be able to use the PTZ functionality directly from cam command. Uh, now, it is important to note that not all cameras offer, say, PTZ, or they note that it's PTZ and it is only Zoom. Um, but even so, if it is only Zoom, you'll be able to use that feature with our plug and play devices directly from the interface. Two questions from Tyler Berger and Gio Bianchi uh, surrounding storage. Uh, Gio wanted to know if we're able to store footage past 90 days on an external storage solution outside of SkySwitch. Tyler was asking if there was any kind of archiving available from SkySwitch beyond the usual retention periods. Um, all right, so with the first uh, question in regard to local storage interface, Yes, um, that's actually become somewhat popular in, in terms of cloud solutions bundled with a local solution. Um, typically, what you'll find is that most cameras these days have an SD card slot. SD cards are you know, becoming rather cheap these days, so that gives them you know, quite a bit of storage capability locally. Uh, again, depending on the resolution and frame size and all that. Um, but yes, you are, do have the ability to store separately uh, for say a longer period, say 90 days locally, 
on your storage device, whether that's an SD card or a NAS, and then also stream to CAM command, say for a shorter period of time, whether that's seven days or 14 days. So you have kind of a, a dual coverage, um, as well as again, that instant access to you know, that shorter retention period. Um, could you repeat, what was that second question there? Second question is, you talked about archiving earlier. Is there any archiving beyond our standard, our, our standard retention period? Okay, so past 90 days, we can offer custom periods, um, but no longer than a year. But that will be on a custom base and will be custom priced as well. Um, now, you mentioned archiving. If you are referring to actually uploading stored footage from, uh, say, a local device to CAM Command, that, that will not be possible. Okay, well, that pretty much tells us that answer. Um, real important question. How do you sell the first camera? This one comes from Dale Morgan. How do you sell the first camera? Well, as we went over in those four basic steps, I'd say the easiest way to sell that first camera would be to just go ahead and offer a free seat with whatever the next, whatever you're selling next. Again, whether that's VoIP, network services, you know, what have you, is to say, hey, I can offer you, you know, this paging system or this phone system. Along with that, we are offering a special to where you get, you know, seven days of retention for free. So you eat that seven day cost. And at the same time, you can sell them a camera if they don't have it. Um, that's probably going to be the easiest way to get your foot in the door. At that point, again, you're just giving them a taste of what's offered. Um, along with that retention period, you could also write it in as limits. So say for the first 90 days, you get seven days of storage for free. And after that, if you want to continue to move on with it, you would just apply the, the uh, reseller prices for that retention period. Um, but that, in my experience, has been the easiest way for our resellers to, to really get in there. Well, that leads to another question. And Robert Harney wants to know, how easy is it to hack a camera? How is the security set up on Cam Command? Would it be similar to the security on some of the desktop phones or is it even more intricate? It's obviously a Linux-based processor or Linux-based program runs most of this stuff. How easy is it to hack it? Sure, um, I would say with a plug and play camera, those connections are completely encrypted. Um, and our, our platform is also running off the AWS platform as well. So it, that's rather secure. Um, my only thought of threat would ever come from, say, a port forwarded camera. Um, that's a very camera to get, a very easy camera to get into, um, especially for, I'd say, even for amateurs. So um, in terms of security, I would always push towards the plug and play devices because their likelihood of being hacked or accessed outside of uh, the CAM command platform is slim to none. Next question comes from Daniel Millington. Is there an app or tool that would let a business owner display either their on-prem or at a remote location to a monitor saying four live feeds and the quad view, allowing them to see multiple live cameras at a glance? Sure. So with our web interface, it's really cool. So if you have, say, a large monitor, um, although it would have to be uh, connected to some type of PC or computer, um, you would essentially just access the web browser interface and from there, you can access the account to where you can actually drag and drop and resize certain um, frames uh, as you see fit to fit on the screen. Um, now, it won't necessarily be a pop-out view per se. It would be within the browser. But yes, that would, you would have that ability to, again, arrange your cameras in an order you want to see them, make certain frames larger or certain frames smaller if they're less important, and be able to view that live. What? Well, when you, you look at all this, um, another question comes from Mark Colick. He says, I love and understand the concept, but I've never been able to cost justify this against the basic premise system, especially longer time frames in excess of 30 days. Can you provide some type of comparison showing how there's a great advantage over a premise based system? Also, are there any licensing issues for certain states like New Jersey, or does the cloud system eliminate that requirement? Why don't you do this? Why don't you answer the second question first and then work with Emily to get one-on-one -on -one with Mark because I think his question's more intricate than the time we have. Um, and I think a one-on-one -on -one session with you, Justin, would really help him work through that challenge. So answer the second part, which about licensing issues. Absolutely. Uh, now with licensing, that will depend state to state. 
Um, nearly all states do require, especially for the installation of a camera, to have a license. So you will have to look into that. And I will note that on our knowledge base, I have created a, an Excel spreadsheet um, that includes whether or not you need a license and then a link to the proper page to where you can either fill out the form, take the class, or pay the fee in most aspects. Okay, next question comes from uh, Dale Morgan. Are, what are the network security issues? Should we keep the cameras off of the data network or should the cameras be behind a firewall? Um, that again would depend on, if it's a plug and play device, I, I don't think there's any need for it to be, you know, necessarily behind any different type of firewall. If it's port forwarded, yes. I would definitely recommend to maybe even use DDNS to connect uh, rather than the standard port forwarding, just to ensure that you have that extra block of security. Okay, next question um, from John Adams. Is the storage plan based by account or device count? Storage plans are based on the device. So here's how it goes. With the retention plans, all cameras must be on the same retention plan. There's no way to mix and match those. Um, although each plan is specific to each individual device. So a seven day plan would say you have five cameras on a seven day plan, that seven day plan would apply to each of the five cameras. Bill Smith wants to know, can we move the data automatically to AWS like call history is now? Um, not currently, although that is being investigated by the development team behind Cam Command. Okay. Um, Bill Smith also says, to be honest, the word surveillance scares me. Yes, Bill, you, I, I, I agree with you. I, I've intentionally, you've heard today, talk about monitoring and observation and all these other words to stay clear of the current day term around surveillance. Uh, so I'm very sympathetic to that. And as has Justin, if you listen to the way you talk today, we're trying to extol the virtues of having video monitoring of property and being able to protect your property. So to your question, he says, in New York State, any device or system that records video or audio requires a New York State alarm license. Are there any ways to avoid this expensive and complicated process? Unfortunately, there's not. Now, if you are the type of reseller that that takes a, that puts a lot of effort and a, a lot of time into being the one that installs the device, there's probably not going to be a lot of options for you. Though, uh, what I've seen in certain aspects is that there are definitely already folks out there, contractors that are installing cameras. Um, and what I've seen uh, in certain experiences is that certain resellers will actually approach the contractor uh, that is licensed to install the cameras uh, to do so, or have the actual end user reach out to a contractor, have them install the cameras. Because actually providing the service uh, that Cam Command offers does not require a license. It's merely the installation of the camera itself. Okay, and then the last question from Tyler Berger. Was upload bandwidth discussed? I, well, you talked a little bit about 1.5 gig, uh, gigabytes and da 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 da, but, or 1.5 megabits a second, but I don't really think you dove deep into it. And then the other question is, do the cameras operate in a store and forward mode or they stream directly to the cloud? That store and forward mode idea would also work really well in the car environment that you and I discussed, because the camera could be running, 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 but it doesn't have to doesn't upload until it hits a hot spot. How, how do these work? Sure, now I'll, I'll answer the second question first. Um, in regard to how it streams, it's streaming directly to the cloud. There's no back storage or anything like that. Um, that would apply merely to local storage, whether it's built into the camera or on say that network that the camera lives on. But yes, all the information that's coming to Cam Command is coming directly from the camera, um, streaming 100% direct to it. Um, now to go back to your first question in regard to upload speed, that is pretty much the bread and butter to anything cloud-based, right? Anything that's streaming or uploading. Um, now with cameras, there are always, you know, tricks of the trade to be able to re either reduce uh, consumption of bandwidth or to schedule it to only do so at a certain time. So you're not using say cellular data or what have you that's often quite expensive. Um, some of those things being reducing resolution, number one. Um, so you could bump it down to say a 720p resolution to stream to the cloud um, or even 1080p these days doesn't eat up too much bandwidth. But yes, by rule of thumb, it's going to be anywhere from one and a half to two megabits per second per camera if you're using a 1080p resolution. 
Um, tricks of the trade to that would be to A, reduce either iframe interval um, or uh, actual bit rate itself can be reduced, although it is worth noting that doing so, reducing those too much can often sometimes obscure the, uh, the actual image resolution itself. So it's kind of a, it's good to really go into uh, say a, a customer that's thinking about a camera system and ensure that the network capability is there before you even offer a solution that or have, you know, information on, um, uh, on say cable companies or internet service providers in the area that maybe they can use to upgrade or maybe have an idea of pricing of what it costs to maybe jump up a level uh, for their service. Could be a reason to have an SD WAN solution like some of the resellers talked about last week or two weeks ago on our reseller call. Uh, another idea would be to have localized storage versus cloud storage if you are in a flaky internet environment or just if you're bandwidth constrained, stuck on an old DSL line. Last question, and I, I really wanna, you know, it's the top of the hour, we've run a little long, but Justin, you're great. You're a natural at this. Um, where can we find a knowledge base that outlines the license requirements for installers in various states. That one comes from John Adams. Sure, um, I'm not sure. Emily, if maybe you could send out a link, I can link directly to it. Um, otherwise, if you just go to, let's see, just our sky switch. So it's the actual URL to the full knowledge base is docs, D-O-C-S dot skyswitch.com. And from there, just find our VSAS portion of that knowledge base. And within that, you'll see um, a number of articles, but one of those including the actual state's requirements. And with that, I want to thank Justin. I want to thank Gary. You guys were great. Gary, especially. Props to you for landing a customer so fast and making them happy and all the good that comes from that. Yes. Um, I want to let everyone know we'll be sending out the webinar recording and posting it to the website tomorrow. So keep an eye out for our weekly webinar rewind that will hit your inbox. Um, we're also, we'll let you know who the lucky three winners are of that valuable sky switch swag. Gary, we're going to get you some too. So don't worry, you're not being left out. We, that's our way of thanking you for taking time out of your day. Um, we're going to take a short summer break from our webinar schedule for the next two weeks. Um, figuring you guys just need a break. It's the summertime. You may want to spend a little bit extra time with family on your business dealing with all the things that are going on. But we'll be back on Tuesday, July 28th. I'll be here along with Guy Fox of Telepath Communications, one of our Club 1000 members. Guy's doing really well. He's gonna talk about what's working for him. But what we're also gonna dive into is a solution that some of you have started to use and I'm hearing great things about it and wanna learn all about it. It's called Glance and it's an app that's built specifically for SkySwitch resellers by guy that has saved him so much time and is actually helping him make money. So with that, I want to thank Justin, Gary, of course, Emily, Erica, who are the true engine that keeps things running here at SkySwitch in our marketing department. If you have any questions, please direct them to marketing at skyswitch.com uh, and then we'll get them over to Justin. If you have any comments about our webinar series or if there's anything you're interested in, having us talk about in the future. We're putting together the schedule for the fall. So give us your ideas, give us your thoughts, give us a, your insight. But most of all, we give you our thanks for being part of the SkySwitch community. I'm Andy Abramson. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer. Let's all have fun this summer. Stay safe out there. Be careful. But most of all, stay connected. <laughs>